Dr. had just presented. Uh, this is uh, about lipoatrophic diabetes. When I was a student, I read uh, the textbook of secondary diabetes by Professor Vishnath and Podolsky, which they, when they said that this prince or a pharaoh probably had lipoatrophic diabetes, while that has never been proven, the lipoatrophic diabetes has lost some of its enigma because now the mysteries behind this are being slowly unraveled. We start with a 35-year-old male who was detected to have raised blood glucose readings upon evaluation for polyuria, wasting, and modest weight loss. He gave no previous history of any chronic illness or drug exposure, and he has no recent vaccinations or there is no history of uh, exposure to or positivity for the retroviral infections. The urine kit was for negative, and uh, he was referred to us. This is how you look. You look at the axilla, which has got uh, uh, acanthosis. There is also a tag that's uh, visible for you and the medial aspect of this picture or on, the, on your right side. And you can see the muscularity that this individual has. Uh, on the face, uh, his face looks that he has lost the buccal pad of fat and he was bile not muscular with prominent veins. So diagnosis in these patients is not very difficult. He had no family history of similar uh, features or diabetes and he does not remember that uh, he had any uh, issues earlier. He had not got uh, many of his earlier photographs but he said that this has developed only in the past one to two years. His uh, urine creatinine, his uh, serum creatinine was normal. His uh, urine albumin was just borderline high, but on the petition, it was found to be normal. His uh, liver enzymes were normal. His um, INR was not normal. His direct uh, LDL was 108. His triglycerides was 410. And he had a fatty liver with no features to just your cirrhosis in terms of uh, prominent portal veins of spinomegaly. He had received insulin therapy earlier without any control. But he was started on metformin uh, with tapering dose of uh, insulin, and later pyoglitazone was added. This is a very uh, rare occasion when we start pyoglitazone in our units. Pyoglitazone is generally not used in our unit for anybody. Presently, he's off insulin, and his fasting glucose is 112, and post breakfast is 157. Uh, what is a lipodystrophy syndrome? It is a very uncommon type of diabetes and it is heterogeneous group of syndromes which could be congenital or acquired, partial or generalized. And in addition to diabetes, they can have multiple organ uh, involvement. Uh, as I said, this patient fits into the acquired lipoatrophy, which is usually uh, the generalized one with, which is called the Lorentz syndrome. An acquired partial lipodystrophy can also occur. This can also exist with human immunodeficiency viral patients, sometimes during treatment, or it could be because of localized lipoatrophies, which are or sometimes seen even with uh, uh, insulin injections. Uh, but the congenital forms uh, are again generalized or partial, and you will see pictures uh, like this. But what has been understood now from this lipoatrophic diabetes is how does the fat cell form? From the mesenchymal stem cell, we have pre-adipocyte, adipocyte, mature adipocyte, and then the adipocyte becomes apoptotic. The entire problem in lipoatrophic diabetes in the simplest form that we can mention is the absence of mature adipocytes. So the body is unable to store fat in the locations which are usually the ones where fat needs to be stored and it gets stored in, in various other organs causing a dysfunction, say, of liver in terms of NASH, pancreas, some muscle, and even cardiac muscle. Various factors are required for this, and this is important to know these factors because these factors are the ones, the deficiency of which causes the congenital type of uh, lipoatrophic diabetes. An impairment of these also will lead to the, the, the acquired forms of uh, lipoatrophic diabetes. Uh, this, uh, 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 as uh, my producer just said, that the numbers keep changing, but increasingly there is emphasis now on diagnosing the diseases based on the gene defect that uh, the individuals have. And these could be uh, various uh, genes which, which are mentioned in, in, in this diagram. 
uh, the pictorial representation of this is uh, in this manner that if you have a congenital form, it could be generalized, wherein the red one looks at the muscle. There are children who are born with this and they have got, they look like Hercules with prominent muscles, prominent veins, and prominent veins are considered a very important sign uh, in the differential diagnosis of these individuals. And they are absolutely without any fat. In the partial hypertrophy, the, the, the absence of fat is not generalized, but in certain areas. Similarly, the acquired forms can also be there, but in these acquired forms, you could have a partial where there could be a lipo hypertrophy in the lower uh, limbs, or there could be also a hypertrophy of fat in the abdominal region, which, which looks more like pushing oil appearances. So in this, uh, in the first variety, which is congenital generalized, you also have a hypertrophy of the uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, liver disease, and nephropathy. And in the familial uh, partial hypertrophy, you have pancreatitis, hypertrophia in women, menstrual irregularity. In the generalized uh, lipoatrophy, which is acquired, you have liver disease and you could have prior history of uh, paniculitis. Then in the, you could have C3 nephritic factor in uh, the partial uh, lipodystrophy of the uh, Simons variety. Uh, and in some, uh, in some other forms, you could have, again, cardiovascular. So it's important to know that independent of diabetes or uncontrolled diabetes, these individuals are at risk for pancreatitis, liver disease, hepatocellular carcinoma, cardiomyopathy, as also uh, neph nephropathy, which is generally dense deposit uh, uh, membrane proliferative disease. The, the spectrum obviously depends on uh, the way the resistance is. If you've got very uh, limited insulin resistance, then you have got uh, due to familial fat storage, and it might look like a general population distribution also. With progressive increase in insulin resistance, you start having uh, the uh, apple type of uh, obesity, extreme apple obesity, loss of glutathione storage, and finally, no fat cells in the body. So this is a story of uh, ectopic fat deposition or the metabolic inflexibility of the fat cell. We do require fat cell for storage of uh, the uh, energy for uh, future or use during the fasting or famine stages. But if these individuals do not have that, that produces abnormalities. Uh, the role of leptin has been investigated in, in, in this, and, and it has also been looked upon as a therapeutic option, which we will come to shortly. The major features, as I told you, for us, it is only lipoatrophy and people with diabetes, high insulin requirements. But also, they have got other important features which are telltale evidences. The moment you see one patient, you will not forget the type of uh, problem these people have. And generally, these people look very muscular and they are almost devoid of fat with prominent muscles and loss of fat in various uh, areas. And if it is generalized, then it is very easy to make out, but it could also be partial with some lipoid hypertrophy. Uh, these are the kinds of uh, acanthosis nylicans that you see, and you had seen in our patient, both acanthosis nylicons and agrocortone. Now, in the differential diagnosis, of course, you could have wasting from anorexia nervosa, HIV acid wasting, patient with adrenal insufficiency, sometimes Graves disease, uh, but these people may or may not have a diabetes mellitus. Partial hypertrophy, as I said, one of the varieties can look like Cushing syndrome or tranquil obesity, uh, and, and there could be also sometimes some confusion with acromegaly and diabetes. But in a typical case, and if you have seen one, then you are not going to mistake it uh, the next time. There are some anabolic features of insulin. You know that whenever insulin resistance is there, it is not a generalized insulin resistance. This is it. Uh, some, some organs respond, some organs do not respond. So you could have uh, muscular uh, hypertrophy, acromegalite phases, voice, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, voracious appetite, accelerated growth. And you can have, of course, the metabolic impairment, which we, which we just talked about. 
And this is what we talk about. Whenever the fat is not there, it spills into other areas and causes uh, issues over there. The approach to these patients is, of course, when you suspect lipoatrophy, try to lose out, rule out other causes of fat loss, uh, and and see if the person recovers fat, say after good nutrition. Look for HIV infection. Look for aging traits. And if you do not have that, then you try to see whether it's generalized or partial. When did it set in? Was it from the childhood or was it from the newborn period? And then you to sort of uh, decide whether it is is the congenital generalized hypertrophy, acquired generalized hypertrophy, and, 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 and then classify them. Uh, the diabetes usually in these patients is very difficult to control, uh, but there is no diabetic ketoacidosis. Preferably, one should use insulin sensitizers in this patient, and many acquired patients respond very well. But the congenital varieties have difficulties in responding to it, and more so uh, if they have got renal impairment, metformin cannot be used. Uh, if you have got glitazones, you can use them. But the problem there also is that that can also lead to uh, sometimes fluid retention, and that can have issues with renal impairment. One can use concentrated insulin preparation. In our country, we have got only 100 to 200 units, but abroad you can get 500 units also. Uh, because of the way the action of glargine and Degula is protracted, it is felt that these molecules may not be useful, uh, at least glargine, uh, as effective as they are in terms of basal insulin administration. In these people, insulin can be administered intramuscularly also. There is no cure as, uh, as we know, uh, it's a progressive and life-threatening condition, but surprisingly, these people have got good response to hypertrichidemia by mere dietary regulation. Metabolic abnormalities require treatment, and these people can be given PPAR alpha agonist therapies. Hypertension has to be managed, and one has to look for renal and hepatic impairment. Uh, calorie restriction is also important because some people may have voracious appetite. One could and should have stricter LDL targets given that these people have got considerable cardiovascular risk. The met metroleptin is being tried in uh, generalized lipoatrophy variants. It reduces appetite, body weight, HbA1c, triglycerides, and also hepatic steatosis. There are studies that it even reduces the cardiac steatosis. But the problems are that all people do not improve, and the renal dysfunction may or may not improve. And it is advised that if somebody is on insulin, the insulin doses should be reduced. There are many investigational agents also, but they are not uh, in the uh, stage that they can be administered to patients. But as we understand more of this disease, one might come up with uh, uh, therapies which are uh, for probably either targeting these, the, the, the tri hypertrichidemia or trying to look at um, inhibition of uh, Janus kinase one two. So there are some antibodies which are there, mostly for the management of hypertriglyceridemia. So in conclusion, this is a disease where the diagnosis is easy, but management is difficult, and often one tends to just commiserate with people. We have had the misfortune of treating a generalized uh, um, lipodystrophy patient who progressed right in front of our eyes from diabetes to renal impairment to. Uh, requirement for dialysis and no prospects for transplant. This, however, gives insight into the role of factors for adipogenesis, ectopic fat deposition, and insulin resistance. Glycemic control is difficult, but insulin sensitizers may be used in the partial varieties. Uh, and target achievement can be frustrating. One has to be vigilant for renal, hepatic, and cardiac dysfunction. Leptin therapy is beneficial, but in, only in some. There are scope for many more therapies. And organ transplantation, we talked to our colleagues. Uh, they said that they have not seen many patients, but in the congenital lipoatrophic diabetes, there is a chance for recurrence of this condition. With that, I thank you very much for.